Welcome back. Let's take a look at the mistakes that we made last time as shown through the three quizzes. Three being three more than we usually get because there were just, just such a high error rate or incidents in our last season or our last video that uh, yeah, we have some questions as to how can we play this game better. Question one, in this position, do we play our knight to 7-7, seven, seven, or do we drop a knight on 8-3? Dropping the knight on 8-3 forks a lance and a king, and in fact, that's what we played during the game. However, you know, actually during the game I liked this move, because it allowed me to do a different fork. Uh, and when we went to review this with an engine, it concluded that there was no need for me to do anything quite so hasty. And if I just like kept my head on straight and prevented them from dropping a bishop, this would have been just fine. So that's tactic one of three. We are in this position. I am completely winning. By contrast, after I do this drop, yeah, we're still significantly better, but not completely winning. So after the opponent takes, I was thinking this bishop drop, um, this engine, whatever it is, uh, recommends this rook drop instead. And it's a bit complicated, but, you know, we'll eventually get to the king. Uh, whereas, you know, if we just drop this knight here and then start hacking away at the castle, uh, with this many pieces in hand, we should be able to cut straight through it. Um, so yeah, there, <laughs> for an engine, this is a cakewalk. For a human, we should be able to figure it out. That's the point. On to problem 24. So in the game, we played one of these moves, either 4-3 pawn drop or 5-6 bishop drop. And... Uh, in reality, the other of these moves is the strongest. I think, yeah, this was kind of a mess. Uh, so here, playing a pawn on 4-3 uh, leads to an effect that if the rook takes, you can drop a bishop and pin the rook, which slows down this attack and also threatens to do rook takes silver. And if they exchange the bishop, then you get a bishop. Uh, whereas pawn drop king takes you have a bishop check over this way and they can't drop the pawn to interpose because dropping two pawns on the same file is illegal so this is a clever pawn drop that if you see it yeah clearly it stands out in the game we drop the bishop which is extremely committal and banks on being able to take this pawn here or banks on being able to survive long enough after taking this other pawn. So, yeah, I'd have to give up the bishop in this line if they were to promote, and my gold here is hanging and my bishop there is hanging. Um, dropping another bishop trying to attack this doesn't work out because this bishop battery is cut short by gold takes bishop. Although dropping a bishop here actually looks somewhat reasonable because then i could take the silver next but then uh, the opponent could take this gold next so yeah maybe that doesn't quite work out but in this line the rook conveying an attack with this silver with this bishop is the most serious threat and this <laughs> yeah i thought pinning this would actually the pin can be cut by the silver but this attack here it's the rook directly, it would have to move again, and then we could pick up a gold. So that way if we lose a gold, we can just drop another one. And sure, that sounds kind of convoluted, but also this king silver fork results. So that's tactic 25, or 24. Let's move on to 25. The question is, do we drop a rook? Uh, or do we move the rook from 7-9 to 4-9? Or do we drop a bishop here? During the game, I would thought it was all clever dropping a bishop here. 
turns out that this bishop can be surrounded and doesn't have much of a future here, if I remember right. Maybe I'm misremembering. But yeah, they're, this attack down this file... Well, actually, yeah, this bishop hitting this gold and this rook, and this rook hitting down file 4 would really suggest that you want to move the rook out of harm's way into useful location before you do this bishop drop. And this is just a really tense position. It's been a tense position for quite a few minutes in the actual game. And yeah, this is not fun, but it's playable. Um, whereas in the game, after this bishop drop, I am almost completely lost. The opponent can just attack directly both with the rook and the bishop and completely ignore my threat to promote here. Because my king is caught right in the middle of all of this. And now my threat to promote and attack their bishop kind of misses. Because there's no bishop here and there's no rook there. And they're, they have two gold generals and a rook bearing down on my king. So I can stop one of those. But they can reinforce it. I can reinforce my defense. They can reinforce their attack. And yeah, it's just a super painful experience. So those were some of the tactics that we missed. Just some of the tactics that we missed last time. So hopefully we could do better this time and not end up with three quiz questions for next time. We'll do our best, but you know, anything can happen. Uh, we are still amateur, or we still are 1Q amateur. Um, so that said, let's get into it and see how are we going to play today. Uh, I'm thinking I want to stick to third file rook. Well, I take that back. Good luck. If I'm playing Senta, I want to play Static Rook, because this is the most, the way to assert the greatest advantage. Um, so, I know this is not how I typically play these days, and that's fine. Um, it's fine to the extent that, like... Yeah, I can do my best to try to play uh, the way that a Static Rook player normally plays, even though I don't play Static Rook openings, so I'm just a bit confused about this. If I castle quickly, they're going to bear an attack on my king very quickly. Um... Okay. Okay, we'll see if I survive this, I guess. Um, possibly my move order is extremely suspect. Um, that, and I'm supposed to have the silver here, not a bishop here. So I'm doing something not correct put it lightly. Um, hmm. So I want to hit this bishop's head, but if I aim direct, well, if my silver goes chasing, they close this diagonal. Um, yeah, I don't understand this position particularly well. Hmm. 
Oh, if I do that now, they can push this wedge. And actually, my soul... Well, okay. My grand thought was twofold. One, I wasn't sure if I want to bring the silver out to hit this. Two, I could bring the knight out. Um, but this instant I move the knight, it makes it harder for me to use my other pieces. Um... So, yeah, I could be very off base here, but to me it looks like I have a path forward. Um, so, yeah, I've cut off the path for my rook to attack on this file. Because the silver and pawn already cut my path there, and I see pawn 5-5 five five coming quickly. So instead I prepare this countermeasure with the silver advance uh, supported by a knight and a pawn. Is this smart? Perhaps not. Nanafun. This is what I wanted to try or to see. Again, perhaps this is extremely silly. I'm not sure. And I don't even know how best to test this other than just to try it. If they attack this knight with a silver drop, I anticipated bringing the rook up and I don't know. Dropping a silver, attacking this somehow. I've done something most peculiar. Let me check my overlay. Overlay looks fine. Cool. Oh, I have a silver to drop between these gold generals. That could be of some interest. If they drop a silver, if I drop a silver, where do we end up? They take my knight, I take their bishop. Oh, never mind. Um. Hmm. All right, well, oh, gosh darn it, the rook protects that. <laughs> um, yeah, the, what can I say? What can I say? I don't even know. I thought I was clever for once. Um, how clever am I? Well, we'll see if I can come up with something to get me out of that. That's a tactic I would have fallen for on many occasions, which is why I thought my opponent might have fallen for something. But no, the rook had that completely covered. I gave up a silver for a tempo, and that's not an exchange usually worth making. Um... Hmm. Now if I move here, this gold advance now? This looks interesting. I mean, yes, I do want to attack the bishop directly. But no, I don't think it... Yeah, I think being a little tricky about my aim here is of some benefit to me. So this bishop can retreat, and I can move the rook back, and that's fine. They could also sack the bishop, and I could take the lance instead of taking the bishop. Or I could take the bishop, but things get complicated, and that probably benefits me as well. At this point, I just want complications, because my position's 
a mess and a half. Um, so I'll take this. I'll accept this. And be happy that things are confusing. At least, hopefully they are. Go home. My night is floating. Hmm. Let's try to make use of my floating night. If the silver advances... Okay, they didn't. Never mind. Um... Oh, how bizarre. They're trying to keep everything intact, but Shogi's not a game like that's so simple. So I promote. I'm forking a silver and a lance. Um, in some ways, I'm actually walking into a tactic here. But I might be seeing one step further than my opponent. So, yes, after I promote here, they can ensnare this with a silver drop. But then I can take the silver and then drop the silver forking the gold and a rook. And meanwhile, they have pieces floating about here that might be targets in the future. So, yeah, maybe I spotted something this time. Maybe not. Maybe this is all part of their plan. I'm just trying to make things complicated. Alright, I have a lance. That's better than not having a lance. Um... I need to use my bishop. So again, I'll try to make this complicated. Okay, if their rook takes, I can use a lance to respond. Instead, they drop a pawn. Um, it's interesting. Something. It's interesting because it's not easy for me to address. If they drop another pawn, we repeat the same. Although they might be able to pick up my bishop in this case. After sacking a knight. But I'd like to think I've made things at least a little complicated. Um, let's defend my king once. Maybe I needed to drop a general instead of moving one. I don't know, but I don't have time to think. I can't drop a lance safely here. Oh, safety's overrated, isn't it? Um...
2分30秒。This looks interesting. I mean, sure, they could sack a rook for a knight. Wouldn't be my first choice of a move. Um. You got my curiosity. I'm guessing gold takes, but like, what the hell can I do? Oh, never mind. Yeah, we've made things complicated. Hooray. It's not going to save me. Okay. Hopefully a horse is just what I need. Because it's just what I got. Back it goes. They're fortunate this horse blocks this attack, or this knight blocks the attack. Um, Ippun. Yeah, I don't know what to say to that. Let's try this. Again, I don't know what to say. It seems crazy, no? But it allows... I've got seven pawns, so I can sack a lot of pawns here. Yeah, I'm not, not sure what to make of this. Other than this is complicated. Don't have much of a choice.
I don't know. Yeah, thanks for the game. Good evening. Good evening. Alright, that's one game down. Two to go. Good luck. Alright, here we are, Santa again. So here, let's try to play the most forcing way. Which is to play Static Rook. Okay, that's fun. That, now we're talking. This should be exciting, eh? Wow. Is that really where we're at today? Seems so. Okay. Well, you got my curiosity. Hmm. All right. Now this time, let's try not to make quite as many mistakes as last time. So this time, let's remember Oh, well that's fun. I say that, and look at what I've done. Well, this isn't technically a mistake. It's just a super unpopular way of playing this opening. Um, yeah, allowing this fork was very highly risky and I should have considered it more, but um, technically not yet a mistake. Um, hmm. although they could have dropped a rook and attacked this, well then the bishop defends that and hits this point. It's still salvageable there. Um, yes, we are facing Sleeve Rook here. One little trick to bear in mind um, is generally you don't want to put your generals on the same file as their Rook. Unless you get something in mind. Um, I have two bishops. What do my two bishops do? What? Really? This doesn't solidify your position unless you're putting the pawn back, but, um, okay. Sure, I'll humor you. What's up? <laughs> Oh yeah, last game also I dropped a silver general for no reason. So maybe let's be a little careful this time. Nana fun. Yeah, I do have the bishop pair, and further, they're a bishop pair in hand that can drop anywhere on the board. Um, it takes two moves to get them deployed, but they can land anywhere. So the opponent has to be careful about 
wherever they might show up. Okay, so my opponent changes their mind and wants to play a central house castle. I can't blame them. I might do the same, honestly. My opponent doesn't have a bishop, so I could play stuff like this without a tremendous deal of worry. I don't want to move the knight, because that makes a huge gap, but... Um, yeah, my castle shape might change a lot if they don't do anything. If they show some aggression or some intention, um, I might have to play differently, but... If they just try to keep this ambiguous shape, then I might change what I'm doing. So bizarre. What more can I do here? I mean, yes, I'm creating a hole, but I've got it covered. Creating another hole, but again, everything's covered. Oh, I, wait, if I had a pawn, I could break this edge. I don't... well... I don't have a pawn, nor really a means of gaining one. Um, Go for me. I'm not sure what to do here. Uh, my silver looks spooky if I move it. Oh, but then I lose this pawn. Is that such an issue or concern? I don't know. Uh, it looks like it. So, what else can I consider? I can move the knight. It doesn't do much. Yeah, I'm still at a loss for an idea.
What kind of statement that makes, I don't know, but it's some kind of a statement. Hmm. Three That's bizarre. I think that's right. Hopefully I'm right. There's no undo button. But I think that makes some interesting complications. Nifun. This is the power of the bishop pair, maybe, maybe not. Too much to figure out during a game. It's too much to figure out. Ippun. Now they have a rook drop in the center of my camp. That's not good. Mm -hmm. All spotted, sir. Yeah, some mental lapses occur during a game. All right, you went on time, congratulations, but you played well. Thanks for the game. All right, let's play another. Good luck. Okay, this time we'll get Gota, so this time we're not going to play Static Rook. Um, just kidding. Apparently I am playing Static Rook after all. Um, it's fine. 
Wait a second, is this how this works? I don't remember it working that way. Um... Then again, I don't remember pretty much anything, so how much should I trust my memory here? Alright, I've always wondered why not this. It looks crazy, right? <laughs> King... Uh, fortress, whatever. How bad could this be? Bogyoku approved move. Yes, there we go. It's got the Bogyoku seal of approval. Mm -hmm. Oh my. Uh, well then. Okay. Now, they've already dropped the bishop. They don't have a second bishop to drop on this board. Yeah, that makes two of us. <laughs> hmm. 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 Hmm.
Oh, with this, I can't really take this pawn, can I? My king is too exposed. <laughs> wow. Didn't see that coming. The rook protects this direction. Okay. I don't understand. Um, Go oh, this gives the bishop somewhere to run to. Yeah, I think you're right. Now, keep in mind, I'm just trying to keep the, make this complicated, and then I'm going to complain about how complicated it is, but... Um, simplifying this position should not be one of my aims.
Oh, they have a fork. All right, we didn't see the fork. Something. This could be dangerous. Nifun Sanjubio. Nifun. Oh, I need to deflect this rook off the back rank. So I can checkmate the king. No, wait. They have a gold. I don't have a mate. If I could remove the gold, I'd have some chance here. Not much of a chance to immediately mate, though. Hmm. I debated pawn drop or knight drop, and I don't know which is better. It's really a mess. My opponent knows what they're doing. Oh, that's a silver. Not a rook.
1分うん、これもなす。Oh, wait. Earlier I was mentioning. I don't have a bishop to draw. <sighs> I don't know. Should have taken the knight. Well, maybe not. Should have taken the rook. Gosh darn it. Moving too quickly.うん20秒。10秒 Fuck. Thanks for the game. Zero seconds remain. No, three games for tonight will be enough, I assure you. Alright. Well, that was exciting. I hope we enjoyed these games together. Yes, we've made an efficient use of time and demonstrated that I can, in fact, checkmate. I hope we enjoyed these games. Yeah, uh, certainly there will be points to reflect over. in all three of these for different reasons. Uh, but yeah, uh, thanks for watching, and have a good night.